When I saw the image over here, I was confused and attracted, but also why? I have only like seven, eight shades, which is considered quite inclusive already. This has 32 idols to, you know, do the endorsement. I'm very sorry. Who are these? Genuinely asking, who are they? No, no, serious, who are they? I feel like I'm gonna get cancelled. <laughs> we are back with another What's New in K-Beauty for the month of March 2024. Now, this is a time where I tell you guys all about the new K-Beauty collections, makeup releases, sneak peeks, what are my thoughts, do I like them, dislike them? I think it's just a good chance as well to kind of like de-influence myself as well, talk myself out of it to, you know, not get what is cute because of the packaging in a sense. I must say that K-Beauty brands are actually releasing trendy makeup products that were very popular back in 2016 and now it's trending here in 2024. Like, I saw it coming but I didn't know it would be this fast. I thought it would be somewhere in like middle of 2024 or like middle late 2024. It's like full blown here and happening and it's trending right now so I'm super excited to talk about it with you guys and without further ado, let's get into it. This time around, I do not have any new makeup releases on hand because I'm trying my best to cut down on my makeup spending for the next few months at least. So we're gonna just jump straight into it. Let's start off with Clio. They have two new releases. One is called the Every Fruit Grocery Collection. Yes, literally it's called that. For this Every Fruit Grocery Collection, it is quite small but rather curated. You do get two of their Pro Eye Palette Air and it's in number 9, Peach Made Apple and number 10, Season Plum. So you can see one is a very like peachy warm tone and the other one is really like cool tone. The whole cool tone warm tone thing is still really really on trend. You also get four chiffon blur tints from Clio. It's in number 19, Giant Apple, 20 Fresh Apricot. 21 sugary as well as 22 red flesh. So you can tell that the names are really like fruit inspired, fresh fruit, which is really fitting at least for the spring summer season that we're in. And whenever Clear does one of these special little collections, they will usually, nowadays at least, include a cushion foundation. And this time around, it's the new found wear cushion, the one in a little like black casing, square shape, that one. But this time around in the special pink gradient packaging, which honestly, I think it's cute. I mean, it's pink, yeah. I prefer the packaging when they did the Koshok collection, the one with little like paw prints and then inside the cushion. That one was cute. This one, mm, okay, it really does low-key kind of look like the high glow mesh cushion from Clio, but this time around, it's the Foundwear foundation line. Listen, if you've been wanting the Foundwear cushion, but in pink packaging, this is it. This is this is what you can get, I guess. I am very tempted to get number 10 season plum of the eyeshadow. I I've been eyeing it. I have it in my cart. I just have not pressed the checkout button because I just know that I have so many eyeshadow palettes in that particular, you know, color category. If you haven't watched my embarrassingly large eyeshadow palette collection, part one. It's only part one. You will see what I mean when I mean I have so many purpley, mauvey, pinky eyeshadows and I genuinely do not need it. So I'm really trying my best to rationalize and tell myself like we do not need this crystal. We really, really do not need this. It's 34,000 won so it's about like 35 sing-ish. Currently, it's on sale for like $30 online on Singapore Shopee official website. But I really don't need it. I could take that $30 and I could eat a really, really nice meal with it. Or if not, I could just take that money and save it somewhere else. So that's that's why I'm thinking the found wear cushion, the special packaging thing, I'm a bit meh about it. So I'm, I don't really care about it. Plus the fact that I already do own the original found wear cushion. I'm just like, okay, whatever. It's cute for the other people. The chiffon blur tints are about 18,000 won. I think the colors are just a little bit too loud to my taste. I like something a little bit more muted. I am actually wearing the chiffon blur tint from Cleo because I knew I was going to talk about it. I'm like, okay, let's put it on my lips. And I remember in the past, I don't really like velvety lip tints, which I still kind of agree to it. I think maybe in the past, those type of older velvety lip formulas were supposed to be blurring, but they kind of bunch up, end up leaving like balls on your lips when the product bunches up and it just wasn't the most pleasant feeling. But nowadays, I think, I mean with this one at least, this was one of the more bearable ones. That's why I kept this around. So 
This is how, okay, what shade is this in? This is in number 4 all day rose. 19 and 20 are a bit too warm. 21 and 22, they look really, really bright as well for some reason. And I think those will look really good on either spring tone and winter tone. Though on Eugene, I feel that they kind of blurred the product a little bit and spread it out and thin it out a little bit. So it does end up looking a little bit more muted, which I actually appreciate whatever makeup style that is going on for her. Basically, when Cleo shows the full swatch of the actual colour itself, I'm a bit... <laughs> nah, I am good. And also, I own way too many lip tints. The next new release from Cleo, I was this close. I was this close to buying it. I was like, nope, nope, I don't need any more. And if you've been on my channel long enough, you know that I am a sucker. And it's like my ride or die, the Cleo Kill Lash Super Proof mascara long curling the one with the red cap and the black body that is the best mascara ever i have gone through i swear minimum five tubes of it at this point because that mascara just works so well for my short straight asian lashes and when they announced that they're releasing a new mascara called the sharp curl mascara i was i i want to try it i really want to try it <laughs> According to Cleo, and obviously I'm reading off Instagram's translation, the natural blending in with the eyes with a deep fog black colour base, I swear by expressing my fat lashes, <laughs> give me some more eye candy. Okay, I, I get the gist, <laughs> but you know, it's really... <laughs> Price on this, apparently in Korea, one plus one, it's 18,000 won, so it's like 19 Singapore dollars. I want it so bad. This is so affordable because one tube of this in Singapore is already 20 sing if I am not wrong. So it is really, really affordable. And they even have it on a little like discount, which is 17,400 won. I'm like, I really, really want that mascara very badly. Had it in my cart, just didn't check out because I told myself I still have mascaras that I need to go through from my previous Korea trip, which is like literally last year in Korea, May. I can always try this out whenever because I believe that Cleo would not discontinue this really fast, I swear. If they do though, I will fly over to Korea and ask why. <laughs> Riot, literally. Because this mascara is so good and I think it's so popular as well. I highly doubt that they will discontinue it. So I believe they will keep it around I give myself some grace and if they really touch wood, discontinue it, then the universe hits so I guess. It kind of maintains the very like long body of the mascara wand and the bristles are also kept really short and compact. Maybe with a little bit of variation. The colour of this mascara, it looks like a blackish grey. And that is something that will make your lashes look even like more natural because the one for the long curling one, this one, it's literally black. I mean, everybody loves a good black mascara, but normally I realize for like Asian beauty in a sense, normally people would prefer if their makeup could look a little bit more natural and jet black mascara sometimes can look very stark and like, ooh, my eyes are here in a sense. And some people have described it as you know, lashes looking like spider legs in a sense. So I think having a colour like this, which is like a blackish grey, will really help to soften the lashes. But because of how good this waterproof, superproof mascara is, it really holds the curl up and even throughout Singapore's humidity. So unfortunately, I will have to hold off on trying the new Kill Lash Super Curl Mascara. From Cleo Sister brand Peripera, we do have new releases as well from them. We have two, one being a lip tint, the other one being a proper collection itself. For the lip tint, it's called the Over Blur Lip Tint and you get seven colours. The first one being Warm Ambassador. Number two, Cool Starter, Pink Check. Coral Lala Vintage Acorn, Moth Trimming and Cooling Up Pink. Now, Para Para describes these shades, for example, Warm Ambassador as the major base for warm skin tones, warm beige base, perfect for point colours. And for Cool Starter, dab it on and feel cool instantly, I'm Cool Rosy Base. Pink Check is described as checking for Summer Cool Pink, Cool Point Pink with highlights your face. Some of the English is a little bit broken. Um, coral Lala is described as wearing it like a princess, a gorgeous coral colour, vintage acorn, instant fix to analog mood, vintage red like ripe autumn acorn, 
Moth Trimming Stream the Muted Moth Tone, Cooling Up Pink Bright Plum Color Love by Winter Cool Tones. I think for the first two shades, Warm Ambassador and Cool Starter, these two shades are basically respectively warm and cool and to be used as base lip tints to kind of like mute out your lip and basically use it as a base, add another lip tint colour on top to help blend and get that full gradient lip plump look. And then the rest of the colours, I feel like they could stand alone by themselves or if not be layered together with number one or number two, depending on your mood. You also can feel free to kind of mix and match warm and cool tone colours together. It's totally fine. It is your face and it's your way on how you want to express and wear your makeup. You don't have to like strictly follow. I think this is one of the first few signs that we're gonna see the pattern of velvet lip tints having a resurgence and coming back in trend because you know why? I feel that Clio is one of those industry K-beauty brands that actually sets trends right now together with Rom N as well as maybe Wake Make. I feel like Wake Make, Rom N as well as Clio, these three brands are like very very prominent right now. I realize that a lot of brands actually kind of catch on to what Clio does because for example when Clio did the repackaging for example of the Foundware line, the one with the, like the square cases and like little like transparent see-through kind of thing, we do realize that later a lot of brands eventually kind of caught on to it and then we see a lot of these ooh, transparent cushion cases. What do you guys think? Are you guys here if, let's say example, lip tints right now are no longer glossy, just pure velvet? Because I feel as well, whenever it comes to K-beauty, when there's a particular trend in K-beauty, every single brand does it. So eventually everybody will have the option of whatever velvet lip tint that you have but it just depends on what brand you like to support or maybe the particular shade that the brand produces for example. It's really like all or nothing in a sense because for example Roman did like the lip gloss, lasting color glosses. What do we see now? A lot of brands are actually doing the whole glossy lip gloss thing as well, actual proper lip glosses so. I'm just saying. The next collection from Pera Pera is the Night Perry Friends collection. Um, they got two idols to, you know, do the endorsement. I'm very sorry. Who are these? Genuinely asking, who are they? No, no, serious. Who are they? I feel like I'm gonna get cancelled. <laughs> Jongwoo and Kim Toyong. It's all like dreamy, sleepy, but it's leaning more towards very, very cool tone, very light, very purple, which is something that I love. So you get one of the All Take Mood palettes in number four, Cool Blush, as well as three custom blushes, one in Candy Pink, number two, Fluffy Peach, and number three, Soul Rose, as well as the Ink Mood, I think it's the Glossy Balm, if I'm not wrong, am I correct? Yes, Ink Mood Glowy Balm, and you get three shades, number eight, Sleeping Coral, number nine, Pink Melima, and number 10, Rosy Hour. This was another collection that I wanted to buy. I swear, a lot of things I was like, I want it, but I can't in a sense. And I think what I was really aiming for was to try out the custom blush in Soul Rose. I didn't pick it up because I feel that I have some of these colors as well in my collection, so I missed on that. The Cool Blush All Take Mood Palette. I'm always very curious about this particular line from Pera Pera because I remember seeing this particular palette, the Pretige Pink, if I'm not wrong, the first one, the very, very first one. I saw that last year in Korea in Olive Young in stores and I was really like about to go and pick it up but I just realised that the colours in real life, especially the eyeshadows, they are a little bit like too close to one another and it's also very light, almost like a, again, a wash of colour, very expected for like K-beauty brands. But this one was like the purple version of it and I was like, oh my god, it's purple. I want it, but I don't need it. It's the it's the whole same dilemma. I feel like my hamster on a, on a wheel, running consistently whenever I see purple, and I'm like, oh yeah, but I don't need it. Oh yeah, I don't need it. <laughs> that kind of thing, so. It's cute though, I really like it. The Ingmo Glowy Balms from Peri Pera, I swear, I feel like people online don't talk about it enough, me included, because I low-key kind of gatekeep it a little bit, because it just has the right balance of adding the glossiness and moisturization on your lips while adding the right amount of pigmentation because I feel that a lot of Western balms, 
they don't really have the color that it's really lacking in the color pigmentation department unless you buy maybe like a really really bright red then there's like a hint of red you know that that kind of thing but these ink mood glowy balms are really nice and they also don't dry out my lips either it's great for days where i just have like a little bit of makeup on my face i don't want to wear too much i just want a little bit of color this is it. So I actually was very tempted on getting number 10, Rosy Hour. But again, I do not need it. I have so many lip tints. Oh my god, this next one, everybody is talking about it right now, at least on TikTok. And I am so tempted to get it. But okay, hear me out. The Free Blurry Pudding Pot. I'm sure you have heard of this. And it's going crazy viral right now. And the color selection of this is crazy as well because they have I think over 30 colors for you to choose from which is almost unheard of in a sense when it comes to K-beauty because normally when they release like a new lip product they like have only like seven eight shades which is considered quite inclusive already this has 30 this new free blurry pudding pot we have a fluffy pudding formula that softly blurs and smooths giving your lips and cheeks an airbrush look so it's a multifunctional product and again we are seeing another velvety matte kind of lip product so i know that this velvet lip trend is gonna make a hot comeback very soon so they call it like the just me moment bestie moment blush moment reddish moment cold-hearted moment and faded moment but you can kind of tell that they kind of categorize it and the colors in those categories, they really managed to, you know, cater and thought of like every single possible color category. And I'm just so shocked that they did this because honestly, this is like a standard that I wish most K-beauty brands would do. But honestly, at this point, we have like so many lip tints and lipsticks available in the market. Like, I think we need to slow down it, but never mind, I beg to differ. And I remember when I, you know, kind of like went online, just, you know, check it out, add a couple to cart. I think the initial, the first line, the just me moment, which you can tell is kind of like all the beigey base color, very muted, also very easy to wear on your cheeks in general. I swear the, the nude, the beigey base colors, the just me moment, that category, there's only like one or two colors left because everything else was sold out. I'm like, wow, to sell out for a K-beauty brand and if I'm not wrong Free is also an indie brand if I'm not wrong so I was really really impressed I'm like wow they are actually killing it and I'm like okay this is something I will keep my eye out on and I think right now a lot of the other shades are also sold out which is a little bit unfortunate um, the only reason why I didn't pick this up is because it's in a pot I like my lipsticks to be portable and with a wand and you know everything and just apply it just like that and I'm out the door. I do not want to take a separate applicator and you know and scoop some out and apply it like that or the worst case scenario and also not the most hygienic in the sense is a little bit troublesome as well. Use your finger, dip it in the pot and you apply it like that which you totally possibly can. It's just that I am a little bit lazy but I am very sure the product itself looks so stunning. Like the actual result that you get on your lips is so pretty. And I'm really tempted. Of course, you can get one of those like silicone brushes and all that, which Free actually does sell together. I think if you buy like the blurring pot as well as the silicone tip, you can do that as well. But of course, it comes at a higher price point. If you guys have tried out this Free blurring pot, please let me know. I am very, very curious on how it wears and how it performs in general. Next up is Daisy, and when I saw the image over here, I was confused and attracted, but also why? <laughs> now, they released four new eyeshadow palettes or tabletops. These are, these are huge, I swear, oh my gosh. And you get 20 shades in each palette, and retail price, they cost 39,000 won which is about 40, 41 sing dollars. I think that this was not necessary. Like genuinely speaking, this is not necessary. But if you are a beginner in makeup or maybe you're a makeup artist and I don't know, I would think, okay, maybe if you're a beginner in makeup, then this is maybe the most bang out of your buck if you're trying to get into K-beauty shadows because I must say that Daisy eyeshadows, palettes, their eyeshadow formulas, 
really good. I do own a couple of their 12 pan palettes and I think aside from the big formula, the one with the ice cream, a little dome one, that one's a bit 50-50 in a sense, but the traditional eyeshadow palette formula, the powdered one, I like that. That one is good. I'm hoping that this is the same formula as the 12 pan shadows because guys, this looks way too similar to one another. I swear, this is probably the biggest K-Beauty eyeshadow palette I have ever seen. When I look at the color chips of the swatches, I... they are really the same thing, I swear. But the shimmers, when the light hits, it's it looks so good. So yeah, I don't know. I For me at least, because I have so many eyeshadow palettes and I've used makeup for so long, I cannot justify myself buying any one of these. I say this now, but maybe we, we, we watch like three, four months later, I'll get one. <laughs> At this point, I would rather get the 12 pen shadows because it's just more curated and you don't have to crack your head or be so overwhelmed by, oh, what shade should I use with this and that, that kind of thing. At least I'm trying to think of it as from like a beginner's point of view or maybe, you know, sometimes when you wake up in the morning and you're too tired to think and you're like, I don't want to use my brain power to think of what eyeshadow look I should do. Will this shade and this shade work in the morning? Uh, kind of thing. Yeah, th that's my concern with me. But yeah, I, I, I obviously am not going to get this. The next new release from Daisy. So, so cute and so pretty. They are releasing highlighters. I think it's already available already. It's called the Lux Glow Highlighters. Described as ultra-fine pearl particles that effortlessly glide on, delivering a radiant glow both to face and body. There are three shades, and number one is Shine Beige, number two, Pink Light, and number three, Ice Lavender. Now, this one, they are individually um, packed. They are individual pens. It's not like a trio or whatsoever. And I must say, I also added this to cart. I'm like, oh my god, this is so pretty. I really, really want it. And then I stopped myself because when I think about it, I don't really use highlighters on myself personally. It's been a long, long time. I had a phase back in like 2017, 2018 where I literally only wore highlighter to school, maybe with some brows and that's it. I would never do that again because it just makes my cheek look so shiny. Currently as well, I don't really wear highlighter. Whatever shine that you see on my cheeks is maybe from a bit of a blush and then it's just pure sweat. <laughs> so, I never use my highlighters as well. They're just sitting there collecting dust, which I find is a little bit of a shame. So again, these aren't that affordable as well. I believe third-party sellers were actually selling it for about 35 Singapore dollars, which again, it's a little bit up there in price. So it's like, yeah, for something that I would never use and just have it there in my collection, um... Yeah, no, I, I don't think so. So that's why I skipped on it. I wonder if this new release, will more brands actually release highlighters? Because I know that there are brands like Glint. Glint's highlighters are also very popular as well. And hence, they have this type of like glowy balm thing, which is kind of trending a little bit on TikTok. Are we going to see more glowy skin? You know, you know, just have a lot of wet shine. It's like a resurgence of 2018 makeup where glowy products were all the rage. It's very interesting to see trends come and go and how people actually like repackage it or just show it in a different light. So I'm really curious to see what other new makeup will come later down the line in 2024. But this is definitely one I added to my wish list. And when the day comes that I decided to get back into highlighters, maybe I'll pick this up. But for now, I won't. <laughs> the brand that everybody loves locally in Korea and internationally as well Rom N, they released one new makeup product, um, two shades. It's called the Rom N Better Than Contour Palette. The first one being called Neutral Warm and second Grey Cool. So it is quite an extensive contour palette, I would say. Normally when brands do contour palettes, or at least K-beauty brands, they normally just have the trio of colors and that's about it. They don't have the additional highlighter shade and the deeper contour shade at the bottom. So I'm really surprised that they actually did additional shades as well. There are not a lot of information about this particular contour palette available in English just yet. So 
I'm really just looking at a lot of like tutorials available on Roman's Instagram page and I think really the key point is the highlighter powder itself because brands usually don't do that and I think that when you apply it like maybe like right underneath here to kind of make this part fuller or if not you want to highlight or bring out your nose bridge i think that is usually the case where you will add the highlighter powder it looks like a matte highlighter so i guess it will look a little bit more natural this is the first time i'm seeing a k beauty brand add a matte highlighter powder i've seen this in c beauty brands for example like kaleidos judy doll that kind of thing with rom m doing this I have a feeling other brands as well will catch on eventually. So it's good that Roman actually did this as well because it adds to kind of like their core product where people actually can go back and pick up one of these contour powders as well. So yeah, good on them actually. Had to take a quick little break, run some errands as well as grab dinner. So we're back to the schedule. Let's talk about Too Cool For School. Too Cool For School, we have the By Rodin Art Class Blusher. They are having a new spring-summer colours, if I'm not wrong. Milky and Lively Tones. For the spring-summer 2024 colours, there are two new shades. One is the Berry and the other one is the Coral. So as you can kind of infer from the name alone by itself, nowadays a lot of like K-beauty brands, they will kind of put the colour story in the name of the product. So the Berry is going to be very like berry, pink tone, a little bit cool tone as well. And for the Coral, it's going to be kind of those like peachy coral colors as you can see so again a lot of brands are doing one cool tone or one warm tone and it kind of complements each other you know what this deberry color really reminds me of this one over here from rom n and i have this like strawberry palette over here and it just reminds me of this berry sorbet color but a little bit more of that milky pinkness in it this one is a little bit pale, a little bit, okay, it, it's very pale. <laughs> Whether I will pick this up or not, I'm a bit meh kind of thing because I do remember actually seeing uh, at the Too Cool For School store that they did have actual blushes of this but I remember not picking it up back then because when I swatched it, it looked like a little bit too pale or just something that I really didn't gravitate towards. So now that they have come out with like this, the berry one, I am quite interested in it actually. Do I need it? No. <laughs> but do I want it? Yeah. <laughs> I want a lot of things but I must realize that I gotta use the stuff that I have at the moment in order to buy all of these new stuff. Oh yes, oh my god, Wake Make. Guys, Wake Make, I feel like has a lot of new releases recently, especially for the month of February. They themselves have also came out with a glow contouring highlighter palette. There's one in Warm Glow and there's another one called Cool Glow. And guys, I can't be the only one who thinks that this actually looks like Dior, like the Dior highlighter palettes, right? I'm gonna put like side-by-side -side pictures like here. You guys tell me if I'm like Dilulu or something. I don't know, but like when I first saw these, I was like, oh my god, Dior dupes? Is this it? And actually, it's quite cute. It does look like it has that kind of like bouncy cream texture a little bit. Wake Make is another brand I feel that actually sets trends really really well or has at least a very like creative take. A little bit more creative at least compared to other K-beauty brands. I feel like a lot of K-beauty brands they end up looking like this like sad beige baby version of different different brands and they end up looking all the same with like a similar aesthetic. Wake Make is a little bit different. Not gonna lie, they still kind of have that same color story and everything but the way they brand themselves, I feel like it's a little bit like edgy, a little bit different, like a little bit of a cool girl but she still fits in a little bit. Still a little bit relatable. I don't think I've seen a K-Beauty brand actually do this contouring highlighter palette. Not yet at least. So they will be the first to do this type of quad highlighter thing. They also did a lip palette. And I'm like, wow, this is different. This is something different. And it actually inspired me to actually go and check out the product and things like that. Um, they have two colors for the lip palettes. It's called the Soft Coloring Lip Palette. You have number one, Pink Flood Glowing, and number two, Peak Peach Glowing. So again, as you can see, one very cool tone, one very warm tone. And I was so intrigued by this because I have never seen in recent years a K-Beauty brand do a lip palette. The one that I can at least think of like mainstream-wise, I think it would be from 
pony effect, if I am not wrong, I think pony effect or pony ever did something like this before. But if not, the most like westernized product of this would be like the ABH, Anastasia Beverly Hills lip palette. So I was like, wow, I could see this working out, especially for makeup artists. I think this would be very, very handy to have on hand. I think the only downside is that the finish that you will get, more or less, it will look very like balmy, glowy. I don't really see like a matte, matte lip cream in there. Again, it kind of sticks true to like the whole KBD trend of like glossy lips and all that because really all of these are looking super glossy and super jelly-like. I must give respect and credit to Wake Make for actually coming up with something different. See, this is the thing that we need. I want to see something different and not like the same, the same five beige eyeshadow palettes come out. Like, enough. The third product Wake Make has kind of like released is the Sheer Layering Dual Blusher. A dual blusher with two different textures and two different colors. Sheer Layering Dual Blush is so pretty with a natural gloss that gently reflects the light as it adheres to the moist and clear skin. By Girl Math, if I divide it by two for, I would say, 18,000 I think that's pretty okay, actually. And that's not too out there in terms of price point. I think the reason why I didn't get this blush as well is also because I felt that the colours in general, they are very pretty, don't get me wrong, they're very pretty, but I feel they're a little bit light. I wish the colours were just like a hair deeper because blushes are super trendy right now and every brand is releasing blushes, right? Everybody more or less has kind of the same similar colour story. So the concept of having this type of dual blush is actually really interesting from a K-beauty brand. I think it's quite unheard of. If not, the only time I have seen a dual blush or at least like a gradient blush is also from Wake Make and I heard that particular gradient blush and gradient contour, they had a contour version of it. That version is very popular among makeup artists because you can like kind of build it up and have a flexibility of how you want the blush to actually look like on your skin. Just a pity that the colours are just really not it for me because it ends up looking the same. I kind of understand that, oh, maybe you want to like test the market and see whether if the product will actually work or sell well because if I were in their shoes and I want to try out a new type of product but also keep it somewhat relatable in a sense to the audience I would go with the quote-unquote safer colors or popular colors not to mention Wake Make has also released another collection I know right they are just coming in out like left right center everywhere it's called the black hush collection if i am not wrong so basically you get one soft blurring eye palette as well as a dewy gel glow tint a velvet cover foundation with a new black hush edition and they have also the water velvet cover cushion in this type of black packaging which is honestly quite quite sexy it looks quite good <laughs> let's start off with the soft blurring eye palette in black hush blurring Honestly, can we be honest here? If I were to take any pink eyeshadow, a mid-tone pink and a black eyeshadow, put it into a duo together, we would probably get the essence of this eyeshadow palette. It definitely did not need to be a 4 8 or 16. 16 eyeshadow pen, <laughs> eyeshadow pen palette over here. It's a little bit ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, it is, but... Again, you see what I mean by like, okay, I don't see any K-beauty brand doing a black and a pink eyeshadow palette because honestly, how did this get clearance like past like YG Entertainment? <laughs> because I feel that people would like, oh my god, it's black and pink, black, pink. You know, you know, that kind of thing? That's a whole other tangent over there. I do like the fact that that row of neutrals or stony grey colour, it does add a little bit of edginess something at least for the neutral wearers to use. However, I do think that the rows and rows of pinks, I do not think that was necessary. This could easily could have been like a 9 pen. Heck, maybe a 6 pen or even a 4 pen, like a quad. Maybe it's also the fact that I do use Western Beauty eyeshadows as well, so that's why I'm a little bit more like nitpicky when it comes to certain eyeshadow palettes. But I'm also aware that not a lot of people are as experimental or daring to go out of their way to wear something like a very colourful and bright eyeshadow or stark neon pink on your eyes. So maybe this is their way of adding colour into their collection or just 
you know, tipping their toes into color or pink because, you know, pink is maybe associated with a little bit more like girly, a little bit more feminine. And I guess in general, it's always good to have a black eyeshadow because black can easily deepen out any look. And yeah, I think it's okay. It's not for me. I get it. <laughs> we have the Dewy Gel Glow Tint in Black Hush. So this is supposedly like a... It kind of comes off as a black gloss, but it does have a little bit of that bluish shimmer in there. So it kind of gives off like a deepened lip look, which if you were on like Western Beauty Talk, you would know that this black lip gloss thing was a whole trend maybe in like late 2022 or 2023. I don't remember clearly. But it was really, really trendy back then to have just like a black lip gloss. People were all the rage about, what was it, Black Honey from Clinique. It gives off like a very similar vibe of like black lip gloss. It's interesting to see such a product eventually being brought over to K-Beauty. So yeah, I don't, I don't need this. I'm telling myself I don't need this. But it does pull off a little bit more cool tone. And if you like a cool tone lip gloss, or maybe you're just looking for a blue shimmery lip gloss, I think this would be nice. The Water Velvet Cover Foundation as well as the cushion itself. Oh, I love the cushion. You know the original cushion with like the silver that looks like a water drop? The packaging on that is so stunning. And I have seen people talk about the Water Velvet Cover Cushion and it makes me really curious on testing out this particular formula because you know your girl here loves a good solid cushion foundation that is, you know, a little bit more on the velvety matte side and something that can adhere really really well. If you guys have tried out this particular cushion, do let me know what are your thoughts as well. I would love to hear from you guys. But basically for the liquid foundation, it does come with a little set so it does come with a brush and the brush is now black in color. So I mean if that's a deal breaker for you, you can check this out. But for me personally, when they kind of like change like the color of a handle of a brush or something, it doesn't really affect me. I mean, I'm not super interested in buying it, but the actual product itself, it looks good. And I'm very tempted by it. I'm always down to try out cushion foundations, <laughs> at least. Also, let me know what you guys think of this video series talking about what's new in K-beauty. Do you like it? Found it helpful? Have I like de-influenced you or influenced you in a sense? I would love to hear from you guys. And drop it down in the comments below. I'm open to hearing suggestions and just your genuine thoughts and also do help a girl out leave a like subscribe down below i would love to see you guys around and i will see you guys in my next video stay safe bye